Right, this is 7.2.4. We're going to look at orbits and satellites today. So, first we define what a satellite is. A satellite is a body which orbits a much larger body than itself, or more massive body than itself, rather. So, for example, the moon is an example of a natural satellite, and the moon orbits a larger and more massive body, which is called the Earth. So, there are different types of orbits by satellites. One of them is geosynchronous, which means that the satellite will stay in the same relative position above the Earth. And two others are medium Earth orbits, or mid Earth orbits, and low Earth orbits. Low Earth orbits will typically move quite fast, so they're used for things like spy satellites which will literally, in a few minutes, um, glide over a country, take pictures, and then it's gone. So they move very, very quickly. Geosynchronous satellites have the same orbital period as the Earth's rotational period. So the Earth does one rotation in 24 hours. A geosynchronous satellite will do one orbit around the Earth in 24 hours. Because of that, the geosynchronous satellites, not only do they have to have the same period for their orbits as the Earth does for its rotation, but also in order to remain in the same relative fixed position above the Earth, it has to orbit around the equator because the Earth rotates um, around the equator. Yeah? So let's write this down. Geosynchronous. which is also called geostationary. So these are typically used by communication satellites. So it's a satellite which has the same orbital period as the Earth's rotational period T equals to 24 hours yeah so if you had a geosynchronous satellite for each planet that will be different but typically, we, we send satellites in geosynchronous orbits around the Earth because we're communicating in Earth. So a communication satellite, for example, if you're watching satellite TV, those satellites have to remain in the same position in the sky all the time. Otherwise, you'd have to change the direction of your satellite dish to pick up the signals from it. Yeah? So essentially, we can get broadcast from one country to that satellite and then that broadcast from the satellite then to another country or location. So if we drew cur the Earth's curvature, if we had location A and we had location B, you can see that above ground there is no straight line from A to B because it has to go around the curvature of the Earth. So if you have a fixed satellite We'll label that S. A communication go, can go straight from A to the satellite and then from the satellite straight to B. And if all this whole system rotates together, relative to A and B, the satellite always remains in the same place. Yeah?
Now, if they're rotating together like that, that also means they have the same what? Period. Well, they've got the same period. We mentioned that already. Oh, frequency. 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 They have the same frequency and they also have the same angular velocity or angular frequency. Yeah? So we'll say that A, B, and S all have the same T, F, and omega. Let's look at some equations of satellites. So here we have the Earth. From now on, we're going to give the Earth a mass called capital M. I'm going to draw the orbital path of a satellite. Here's a satellite. And we're going to say that the satellite has a mass little m. And they have a separation called r. Now, if the satellite is orbiting, it's doing what kind of motion? Circular. circular motion. If something is doing circular motion, what kind of force must act on it? A centripetal force must act on it. Where is the centripetal force coming from in this situation? The center, the center of weight. Where is it coming from? The, center of the weight of the mass. The weight. The Yes, the gravitational force, which is also called the weight. So the satellite is, in effect, continuously falling to the Earth. Because it's also orbiting, it's not falling. But it's accelerating towards the Earth. So the centripetal force needed for the satellite to stay in circular motion or to perform circular motion comes from the gravitational force. And we know from previous lessons the equations for gravitational force, how to work it out. And we also know the equations for centripetal force. So now we need to equate them together if we want to have equations that are meaningful in working anything out. So the centripetal force is equal to the gravitational force. So the equation for centripetal force is F equals to mR omega squared or mv squared over r. So two equations we're going to have are m r omega squared equals to g capital M lowercase m all over r squared. We'll put a box around that. Or little m v squared over r equals to g capital M little m over r squared. Put a box around that. <clears throat> now if we wanted to work out time period, we will use the one with omega because we know that omega equals to 2 pi over t. If we want to work out frequency, again we would use omega because we know that omega equals to 2 pi f. Yeah, so little m on both sides, on both equations, will cancel out. But this is how you construct the equation to begin with, is you, you equate two forces together, 
and then if you can cancel stuff out, you can. So in both of these situations, you can cancel them out. However, in our notes, we're not going to cancel it out because it will make it more complicated to remember how to do it. Whereas if you equate the forces together, say the centripetal force is equal to the gravitational force, you'll write this down. Once you've written this down, cancel it out as you, as you see fit. Yeah? Okay. Right, let's turn to a new page. Next, we're going to look at escape velocity. So the escape velocity is the velocity you need to project something at away from the planet in order to escape its gravitational field. So to escape something's gravitational field, that means we have to reach what is known as infinity or the point at which the gravitational potential is zero. So we're going to look at, again, the rubber sheet model. We have a planet at this point. It's got V equals to minus G M over R. And this is at the surface. <coughs> I'll change this to a capital R. So we're talking about the radius of the planet. And at the top here, we've got V equals to zero. So if we want to send a rocket out into space and we want this rocket to carry on forever and not return back to Earth by falling back down, we need a minimum amount of velocity to send it up with, which means that we need some amount of kinetic energy. So when sending rockets up, you have to calculate its escape velocity and then calculate how much energy you actually need to bring it to this velocity. Yeah? So for a rocket to continue forever, its kinetic energy must provide enough work to reach infinity which is where V equals to zero. So that means that the work done from going from the surface of the planet to infinity has to be equal to the kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy is going to do work against this gravitational field. So how do we usually work out the, or calculate the work? W equals MV. Good. M delta V though, not MV, M delta V. So in this case, we've got EK equals to M delta V. This is work done. So now let's just calculate it. So EK is half MV squared. And that's equal to the mass times by the change in gravitational potential. So we're going to do where we end up minus where we started from. So where we end up, we end up at infinity, which is zero. Then from that, we minus minus g m over r. Two minuses, they cancel out and turn into a positive. So that becomes a half mv squared is equal to m times gm over r. So that becomes g capital M little m over r. We can see that little m appears on both sides, so that can cancel out. So we end up with a half v squared equals to g m over r. Now we simply rearrange and take the square root. 
So V equals to the square root of 2GM over R. And that's our escape velocity. Okay, finally, let's look at the relationship between period and separation. So we start a new page. And this is a relationship you're going to have to derive in some questions. So we start with the same formula as before, where the object or the satellite is doing circular motion and that centripetal force is given by the gravitational force. So we start with m r omega squared equals to g m little m over r squared. We start by cancelling out the little m's because they appear on both sides. So those two cancel out. That gives us r omega squared equals to g m over r squared. We can now move that r to the other side and make it 1 over r cubed. So we get omega squared equals to g m over r cubed. Now we want period. We're interested in looking at the relationship of period. So we know that omega equals to 2 pi over t. We substitute that into omega and square it. So 2 pi over t squared equals to gm over r cubed. Two pi squared, 2 pi over t squared is equal to 4 pi squared over t squared. And that's equal to g m over r cubed. Now we're just going to rearrange this formula again so that we can get t squared and r cubed um, as, a, as a nominator rather than a denominator. So when we do that, we're going to get t squared equals to r cubed. 4 pi squared over gm. This is the crucial step, is to get into this point. Once we're at this point, we can see that 4 is just a constant, pi squared is just a constant, big G is just a constant, big M is just a constant for that planet. So that then means that if we put a proportionality symbol instead of having a constant there, we get the relationship that t squared is proportional to radius cubed. And this is a relationship that you'll need to be able to use as well. Which is that the period squared is proportional to radius And that's the end of 7.2.4.